Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Today's topic is by popular request from you guys on a breakdown and analysis on the key points of the guitar sections from Christians at the Session IG Lives live session with John Mayer yesterday, Saturday, because today's Sunday, for the breakdown of the guitar parts and the information we learned because a lot of you missed it or didn't have time to watch the whole two and a half hour long episode. In case you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Christian, at the session IG Live does these incredible breakdowns of a song with the artist who wrote them and he takes all the different stem tracks and breaks them down, you hear them all in isolation, gives his opinion, gets some feedback and further in-depth insight from the artists themselves and yesterday he did Last Train Home with none other than John Mayer in the chat to give some of his own personal insight into the recording process of Last Train Home. So because a lot of you guys missed the session or didn't have a full two and a half hours to sit down and watch it, I'm going to be breaking down the key guitar parts and only the guitar parts and some of the incredible insight that John gave, not only into the gear that was used for Lost Train Home, but some other things as well that we'll get onto talking about in today's episode. Now, of course, Christian himself doesn't actually record or archive these Instagram lives, so once they're gone, they're really gone forever unless someone else records them or takes screenshots or really gets any bits of information. And during a two and a half hour long episode, sometimes that can be rather hard to actually find an upload of the full episode. So this is also why I'm doing a breakdown for you guys so that you guys can get any information that you missed because once you miss it, chances are it could be gone forever. Now before we get into today's breakdown, I do have to say you guys please go give Christian at the Session IG Live a follow on Instagram. He posts lots of amazing breakdowns from all different sorts of artists and they're really insightful and honestly just cool to get an insight on some of the different recording processes that all these artists have. He's done Who Did You Think I Was, a John Mayer trio song in the past and hopefully he might be doing some more sob rock John Mayer breakdowns in the near future. If you guys also do feel so inclined, you can go to his Instagram bio, it has a link to his website, and from his website you can actually send him a tip, you know, buy him a cup of coffee or a beer for doing these incredible breakdowns, especially through COVID. A lot of musicians are going through hard times and I really do think a beer or a cup of coffee just to say thanks for this incredible breakdown goes a long way. All right, you guys, now let's get into the breakdown. I'm not gonna include a ton of clips from this performance. I'm mainly gonna cover the information, but I'll give you guys a taste of kind of some of the different tracks that you heard because when we get to the lead solo tone, oh my God, it's incredible when you hear it in isolation. So getting into the breakdown, one of the best parts of the session was of course, John himself was actually in the live chat with everyone else. Aaron and Greg also were in giving insight on the drum and keys parts respectively as well, but of course today we're only talking about the guitar parts. And poor John, the comments that he was getting were, a lot of them were cringy at best, and you guys, I'm honestly saving you from having to watch that chat feed because for someone like me who's really interested in all the gear and insight, and I'm sure you guys as well, you don't want to look away from the chat because John might say something really cool or important that you don't want to miss. and. Yeah, it's like kind of like a car crash. You can't you can't look away at the comments and things some people are saying. I'm getting angry at John for not revealing certain things. It was crazy. So you guys are missing that. So that is a big bonus as well to me doing this video. So of course, John right away kind of got asked by actually someone who I'm friends with on Instagram, Daniel Coliseum, about why he blacks out pedals. And this is the first big kind of reveal from this episode. And as you're gonna see on your screen, I'm gonna post a quote of exactly what John said about blacking out pedals. Basically, he says that he doesn't want the price of pedals on the used market to go up or be affected just because he might wanna try this one thing out. And it's great to see that John is hyper aware of his effect that he can have on the market because let's say he tries a pedal that's kind of hard to find already or isn't made anymore and he just wants to try it for one show. And maybe he doesn't even end up liking it after that show and not using it again. But there are people out there who might try and buy up a few of them or jack up their prices on reverb, for example, because they see John using it one time. And even though he might not like it, some people might even put John Mayer's name in the reverb listing. And this can cost consumers who generally want the product more and honestly overall affect the market in a really negative way. So John, massive props to you for trying to protect the used market and people kind of using your name in order to resell and flip pedals for more money just because you might have used it one time. I think that's incredible. And clearly John hasn't been blacking out pedals that are in full production that you can go get right now from a dealer, your corner, you know, Guitar Center along the Quaid, or even you can get directly from the manufacturer and the company themselves. He's not blocking those out because you can just go and buy them and there's no way those prices will take an increase. 
Now, John revealing the reason why he blacks out his pedals also leads to the theory that they are all modded, or some of them are modified, being dead in the water. And now this is a theory that I haven't really personally been subscribing to for the past little bit, and it makes sense. For example, the Klon is just a Klon that's been painted black to maybe try and hide that he's using it, even though he's been using it for over a decade. And it's just the thought that counts. And it makes sense too, because Josh from JHS even said in his kind of teaser about the Black Klon, not, it's not a Centura. Remember, it's John Mayer, guys. He can have the real thing. John Mayer's Black Klon, Josh Scott. It, I will respect his privacy. I get asked this all the time. It is not this. It's not a Centura, like the replica company. This is a replica that doesn't try to this is it's a clone. very clearly this a is clone. not a counter like it says you know Syria tone amps it's not this that's all I'll say good enough and just remember he's John Mayer he can have the real thing it's just a black clone that he's painted that's all that really is going on so again John props for you for being hyper aware of people using your name and negatively affecting the market in that way and you know affecting the consumer in the long run during the session, John also got asked about the 29 pedals Yuna, if he's enjoying it and what his thoughts are on it. And due to sheer volume of the questions and people in the chat, he might not have seen it or maybe he just chose to ignore it and not really give any insight on the Yuna right now. But someone did try to get that information out of him, which I thought was pretty funny. So now we're actually getting into the guitar breakdowns of the stems for Last Train Home. The very first ones you hear are actually two acoustic guitars, one being a Martin 12 string, the other one being a Martin 6 string. John says it might have been an OM42, maybe a D45, he's not entirely sure. <laughs> get a little all right hold on all right so we're getting a little bit of electric in here as well sounds like a sound telly-ish but i'm sure it isn't right here And John was actually on Sirius XM radio not too long ago talking about Last Train Home, and he mentioned that he originally wrote the song on acoustic guitar. So you kind of actually get a bit of an insight as to what the song originally sounded like and eventually led to what we now have the full mix and kind of craziness that is Last Train Home. John also mentions that these tracks were played with a more relaxed right hand compared to the rest of the guitar tracks on the song. It fits the overall theme of these being a bit more easy going and more filling the space and serving the purpose of the song instead of every guitar track being as tight as all the rest of them are. Moving on into the regular electric guitar stems, and there are nine of them, which is pretty insane when you think about it. Nine different electric guitar tracks for Lost Train Home. John does mention that he's running a Dumble and going direct input as well for a lot of these tracks, and that makes the most sense. It's nothing out of the ordinary or nothing we wouldn't expect from John, honestly, on any recording for any album that he's currently making. One of the guitar stems that we get to at this point featured a nice chorus effect on it, and instantly people started spamming the chat. Is that a CE2? Is that a tri-chorus? Is that the Roland? What is it? And John, obviously aware that everyone wants to know what chorus effect he's getting, like what pedal or what unit, he says, stay tuned to the solo section for a reveal on the chorus pedal. And of course, everyone got super hyped up that John's actually gonna tell us what chorus pedal he used on Last Train Home. Now this one chorus effect, actually John says, the guitar is singing, he's on the last train running, which you might not hear in the full mix, but when you hear it on its own. That's very good. So the end guitar is doing that call and response thing with each other. So you get this, let's play them together. Let's stack the 80s guitar together with those guys. Oh, I love that phrasing. All right, let's. You can really hear that the guitar is mimicking 
the singing of He's on the Last Train Running. And I thought that was a really nice, cool touch. And John does something else like this further on when we get to the lead section as well. Of course, John was getting asked a ton of questions on what guitar was being used, and he does confirm that the Silver Sky was doing a lot of the work, but there also are a lot of different flavors going on with the electric guitar parts. And this makes the most sense because on a song with nine different stems for electric guitar parts, it doesn't really make a ton of sense to have the same guitar doing everything. Even though John mentioned the Silver Sky is versatile enough, it can do a lot of guitar parts. It does make sense that he used some other things as well for a few different tracks. But of course, Silver Sky being the main guitar, we have that confirmed, even though we were already pretty sure that that was what he was using anyway. Okay, and now we're getting on into the lead guitar tones and holy moly, that intro lead guitar part he plays when it's isolated sounds insane. Lead one. Chorus one. Well, it's the intro chorus. Love that tone. Hearing the lead guitar parts isolated on their own as well, you can really hear the delay that is going on and that John is using, and you don't really get to hear that in the overall mix of the song, but man, the delay is so beautiful, and honestly, I love it more than the chorus effect that he was using. It sounds great. It's not fighting his main guitar and the main parts he's playing, but it fits perfectly underneath it. And then there's a little bit of a call and response here. Obviously, we have guitar. We have the 80s guitar, too, does this, wrapped around the next bit. Now that might have been the Pete Cornish TES, could have been the Providence Delay 80s. John unfortunately doesn't say what delay effect he was using. Ariel Posen, one of my other personal guitar heroes, was in the chat and he mentions that John is a master of playing guitar to serve the song and not overplaying or not trying to overpower the song with his electric guitar playing. And Ariel Posen is someone who's very big on that in his playing if you listen to it. He's really big on serving the song with your playing and not just playing the guitar to play the guitar and clearly yeah, John is a master of doing that as well, especially when you hear these different tracks for Last Train Home. As we got through the main bulk of the electric lead parts of the song, in the second part of the song, John mentions that, again, the guitar is singing, and the high part here that you're going to hear, actually, right now, the guitar is singing Hey Baby, which is really cool that John, as a singer-songwriter, he thinks sometimes of his guitar as singing along to the song and not just playing certain notes, it's actually singing and adding to almost the lyrics and what the guitar is trying to say. And now we're getting to the part I'm sure you guys have all been waiting for, the actual solo section, and hearing that in isolation, oh my god, it was incredible. <laughs> And that, to me, hearing it, especially in isolation, is one of my favorite John Mayer lead tones on a studio recording that we've ever gotten from him personally. I think it was insane. And John actually reveals something really big here. He wasn't using a Dumble, he wasn't going direct in for this lead tone, he was using a Soldano SL-0100, which is pretty crazy to think that we were maybe theorizing that during the music video of Lost Train Home, the Soldano was just a prop to fit the 80s Eric Clapton theme, but no. John used that in the studio to record the lead tracks for Last Train Home, which is a huge revelation that he actually used that amplifier. Now, do I think we're going to see the Soldano SL100 on tour because that's what John used in the studio? No, I honestly don't think he's going to be using that on tour because number one, during all the Last Train Home performances that we've seen so far, 
the Slodano is not being used. And you'd think that if he's just performing that one song, he would use the amp, if any time, then, that he recorded with it in the studio, but he wasn't. So if he's not using it now, the odds of him using it on tour, I think, are very slim. And plus, the lead tone he was getting during those performances was incredible and it sounded great, so why would he change it up now? And the final really big revelation that we get from this whole session, of course, that John teased, is the chorus effect reveal. And John confirms that it, in fact, was a Boss CE2 that he used for the chorus effect in the studio for Last Train Home. Now, someone on YouTube, when all we heard was little tidbits of the song, said he had a pretty good hunch and guess that it was going to be CE2. Who was that guy? And I wonder. I wonder who that guy was. Today you get to say I told you so. Today I, I don't want to. What I did bloody tell you. I kid, I kid of course, but it's nice to know that my hunch way back before we actually heard Lost Train Home even in its entirety was correct that it is a Boss CE2 that John has been using. And of course I know Chorus has been hyped up a bit for this song and this album. I might have had a slight bit to do with that, to be honest, but a lot of people, I think, forget that during the 2019 World Tour, John did use a Boss CE2 in a course drive loop, and it was set the exact same way, halfway, maybe a little lower, that John confirms. And that's how he had it set pretty much during the 2019 World Tour. And of course, of course, during the 2019 World Tour is an effect that John had been using a lot on, like, I Don't Trust Myself With Loving You. He used the Free The Tone Tri Avatar to thicken up his lead tone. He used it on In Repair with the Chase Bliss Audio Warped Vinyl. So, you know, chorus isn't really anything new, and it's been part of John's live sound, especially for the past two years, really, during the 2019 tours when we really got to see a lot of chorus being used by John. To overall try and summarize my thoughts on the session as a whole, I can honestly say that I loved Last Train Home before this session aired. I think, me personally, it's one of my favorite John Mayer songs to come out in recent years, maybe even more so than anything on The Search for Everything. That's just my opinion. But after hearing this session, I know a lot of people were getting sick of Last Train Home or it was starting to get old and tiring. My appreciation for the song has really gone to another level. All the different tracks, all the work that all the different artists who were on this record put into this song to make it what it is. It was incredible to hear all the synths and the keys and the drums in isolation. It was one hell of an experience and I highly suggest you guys again please go give Christian a follow on Instagram and catch ones in the future because a lot of people are asking for one on Why You Know Love Me, which John said has twice as many stems as Lost Train Home and is one that he said is one of the most insane records he's ever done. So sounds like there's a chance we might get a breakdown like this in a session format for that song. So make sure you guys are following Christian to get a chance to see and get updates if that is in fact happening. And you guys, again, like I said, please go to his website, check out all of the other stuff he offers, give him a tip of a beer or a coffee if you can or feel so inclined. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got caught up on everything you possibly missed from the session in all guitar related aspects. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care. We'll see you on the next episode. As always, please give this video a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe, ring that bell button notification. Leave a comment down below if you want to hear anything else or have any questions on the session because there are different parts that I left out. If you have any questions or want some more insight, I might be able to answer them as well. Guys, take care. See you on the next episode.